It is recording. Awesome. So Sally, should we get started while people are jumping on? Sure. Right. Go ahead. I'll let you. Awesome. Yeah. So I, I just wanted to welcome everyone. It's Amy Yamada here and super pumped to be here with you, whether you're watching live or the replay. Um, I'm, I'm also just so honored to collaborate once again with the fabulous Sally Griffin. And uh, Sally is a dear friend of mine. She's a spiritual business coach. Um, also known as the Millionaire Yogi. And we, we met years ago in a mastermind together and we found that we had this, um, this deep connection around deep connection. <laughs> so we, we really, really resonated in our own unique ways around making sure that when we're running our businesses and growing and expanding that it's not just about you know, checking all the boxes and, and strategy and step-by-step. Step. It's like that, all of that's great. And on a much deeper level, she and I both have this, uh, this really great bond around how it really is about deeply connecting within and deeply connecting with others. And so, uh, Sally, just want to say thank you for um, co-creating this with me. And so we can talk about, you know, the symbols and marketing and deep connection and messaging and, and just have some fun with this. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So for those who um, haven't met you yet, do you mind sharing just a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um... Uh, well, in the capacity of being millionaire yogi, um, I'm a very long-term yoga person, obviously. That's why I took the name on. But I work a lot with, I am a spiritual business coach. And in that, with that hat on, I help um, visionaries become world-changing influencers. And so my, my focus is influence. And then what we're talking about today is a new company and it's, a, it's an old hat I've had. I was in film school hundreds of years ago. Actually, I always say to Renee, when I was in film school, you weren't even born. And that's the, kind of <laughs> the difference in what we were up to. But this loop back is something that has come to mind when I'm talking about to my clients, to uh, coaches, to colleagues, what is a missing piece um, that helps with connection? And it's all about the secret of symbolic marketing, which is a great interest of mine and visionary ads. And so mm -hmm. I'm wearing a different hat today. This is not spiritual business coaching. This is what are the pieces that everybody in, in the world that we inhabit needs to market themselves well and with the, with the idea that connection is the main piece first. Yeah, yeah. definitely, definitely. Yeah. And, and, um, and Sally and I had this really great conversation of, around um, how noisy the marketplace can get. You know, like I, I just think about when I'm scrolling on my phone, you know, on Facebook or Instagram, or we've talked about YouTube, how like my experience that we're bombarded with ads and these long form posts and all that. And I'm not saying that that's good or bad or right or wrong it's just very noisy and um and so we're just saying how like it's it's as if you're being sold to everywhere right? <laughs> like everywhere and uh so we wanted to have this conversation around symbolic marketing and messaging and really uh so for those of you watching live or the replay it's about how are you putting yourself out there in the world you know how are you wanting to be received and something that sally and i've often talked about is what do you want to become known for so what we're going to do is we're going to have a conversation around these elements and you're welcome to take notes and, and even take some time later today to journal about these things because um, something that Sally and I both believe in is making sure that as each of us put ourselves out there, when Sally puts herself out there, when I put myself out there, that as over the years we peeled back the layers, you know, it's like authenticity wins, right? Being your true authentic self is what is going to call forward the people that you're meant to work with. And so we just, we're gonna have some thought provoking conversations and, and questions for you so that as you put yourself out there in the world, you can think about the symbols, you can think about the message, you can think about what do I wanna be known for? Who am I calling forward? What opportunities are, am I creating? So, so Sally, what I, I love that you've brought something new to me that I'm, I'm excited about as well, which is symbolic marketing. And even though I have a background in marketing, I, I really didn't think about it in this way. And, um, and so can you speak a little bit into what symbolic marketing is and, and just how it can just have a conversation around that? Sure. Um, well, I think most of us would be aware of what first level marketing is, which would be me right now saying, hey guys, you know, I'm an expert in X, Y, and Z. And why you should work with me is, or what you should buy from me is, that's, that's first level marketing. And it's actually predominant. It's what we see everywhere. So I did do a little um, 
challenge the other day. It's a naughty challenge, but it's like, go and have a look <laughs> at all the coaches out there. Bless you, all you coaches, and I'm one too. Um, and see how many people do anything differently than be on a Zoom call, maybe record a Zoom call. And there's nothing wrong with this, right? It's just what is. It's what's available to you. You may not have been trained in film school. You may not, have, you may not even have lights, right? You've got to start somewhere. But what happens is nobody ever moves off that. They stay at the same level. This is first level marketing. And the funniest ad I ever saw was in India about 30 years ago. And it literally was a, a guy with a bar of butter on a massive poster saying, buy this butter because it's the best butter, right? <laughs> And it was hysterical because it was, a, it, that's the kind of advertising that we would see, you know, like used car salesmen. We think of it like that. So the fact that some ads are now more sophisticated and you are trying to get your message out, obviously as coaches, as um, founders of companies, uh, thought leaders, influencers, you have to get your message out. So how are you going to move past all of this kind of um, brazen, first level marketing and bringing in symbolic marketing is is really like imagine the subplot or the subtext or working beneath your brand and so you will have a brand and sometimes when you start to um, just you, you're so busy trying to get first level marketing out which is you know I'm great buy this please <laughs> somebody um, yeah. it it's a very naive level to stay on for, for the whole of your life. What we now need is authenticity is number one thing, but the subtlety of working with symbols. And mm -hmm. imagine if you're watching a great movie. I was just mentioning the other day, like Game of Thrones. If anybody has watched Game of Thrones, you know, long series um, with good guys and bad guys. And there's, there's this subtext that's going on all the time where you're seeing symbols without even noticing him, without even being like sort of brought to your attention all the time. So mm -hmm. that there's other ways of starting to tell a story. When it comes to symbolic marketing now, the best people in the business are people in the music business. And so I'm gonna roll on slightly. The visionary ads that I'm gonna show you examples of today are made by people who are in the music business. And I started working with them because music has a very different focus than business. Mm -hmm. I think we could agree, probably, I mean, you might wanna put in chat. How interesting do you find most business um, videos? You know, do you find them interesting? What do you usually think if I said, you know, what's a typical business video that you're gonna watch or a training? Mm -hmm. um, you might have some preconceived ideas about that. I know I do. Mm -hmm. um, and if any of you dare to say what they might be, like what would you expect if I said, we're gonna do a business training? You're gonna see a business video. Yeah, for sure. Somebody might dare say what they expect. Yeah, and I, I mean, I, I could say it, and it's definitely, I, I can relate because oftentimes I am, like, it's me speaking to a camera, you know, nothing too exciting, except I, I mean, I, I do believe that the power of storytelling can connect and, and uh, make a difference for people. I also know there's a lot of videos out there where it, the attention span is just not there, you know, because it just goes on. It's just a how to, step number one, step number two. And in this day and age, attention spans to me are this this little, you know, so, um, so I can, I can understand where you're speaking into. Yeah. So nobody's answered, but let me tell you what I think a, a business video is. If I was given the option of watching a music video or a business video, mm -hmm. I would incline towards the music video always, even if it was, even if I was, you know, wanting to study something, I just know aesthetically it's going to be more interesting. It's mm -hmm. going to be, um, the way that music videos are put together, they work on symbolic marketing. And so you're seeing a flow of a story. Nothing is direct to camera, pretty much. It's not somebody speaking at you, unless they're rapping at you. Mostly, you're seeing a visual story, which is taking you on this, on this, this glided ride while you're listening to music. And so you're taking in the symbols while your focus is on the music. And 
when you start to take some of those um, details out of the music scene and we put them into business, what happens is business suddenly looks really sexy and fun. And the, the audience is captivated by great storytelling. Um, one, one example I would give you is, I was saying to Amy the other day, and it's a really good example. If you think about wanting to see a video about Richard Branson, the visionary, and who is he and what is he about and what, you know, what are his teachings versus Richard Branson's fleet of virgin planes. How many people would be interested in his, in his planes? Probably right. the percentage would way down. So mm -hmm. the vision of the man is the thing that's more of interest. Then right. you're getting into a level of symbolic, like what's legacy? What is he really about? The planes are just the planes. Right, absolutely. But many coaches are focusing on their fleet of planes, if you know what I mean. Yeah, so, so for those of you watching, um, one thing that you can think about is like, what is, what is the message you want to have come through in everything that you're doing, right? What's the story, the underlying story that you want to have come through? And, and I believe that the more vulnerable you are, like in my experience, the more vulnerable I've been, the more I've shared what, you know, what has worked, what hasn't worked, what I'm, what I believe in. And not just like, here's how you create a high ticket package. And here's how you message yourself. It's like, what, what am I standing for? Right? So Sally and I've had these conversations, like what I stand for is love and deep connection and compassion. What I stand for is generosity. What I stand for is how you connect with every life you touch and going above and beyond business. And so as I've been speaking into this and bringing this type of energy into my retreats, into my messaging and into my, my big events, like, that's the underlying current is love, you know? And it's funny because I've had people say to me like, oh, it's so interesting, Amy, like I come to your events and I feel so loved by everybody and it's a business conference. I'm like, well, good, that's my intention, right? That's how I've grounded the room. And, and Sally's similar, like we, we have that in common of really coming from a deeper place. So for each of you, you can start thinking about like, what do you want to have come through in your videos? What do you want to have come through through your branding, through your website? You know, when, and I know Sally's going to share some really cool examples of visionary ads so that that can also open up your creative juices of mine as well. Just like when I think about the symbols, like we, she, Sally and I did a Facebook live the other day. She was asking me questions. Like, she's like, when you think about deep connection, Amy, what's the first thing that you think of? I'm like, um, I think of hugging, <laughs> you know, like I love hugs. I love hugging people. I love being connected with people. I like, you know, just physical touch, you know? And so she was saying, yeah, so you could have like, photos of hugging and connection, and arms around each other and, and photos. So as you think about your message, your business, your mission, what, what are those symbols? And I know Sally's gonna go deeper into this as well. Um, so just some things to think about. So Sally, do you wanna speak about, um, well, actually I'm excited for you to share. Like, <laughs> I just wanna go there. Cause I know when you first showed me some examples of this, the visionary ad, I was really inspired because it was so cinematic. And so, um, so just to really connect in with those watching to see what this can look like. Do you mind sharing that? No, let me <laughs> technically <laughs> try and do this for you. Um, I'm going to share my visionary ad. So um, not in the capacity of working as somebody who's a, a video producer, but actually as millionaire yogi. So I, I wanted to have, what these videos are useful for are intros when you're doing public speaking. So when I spoke at Amy's uh, Dream Big Last, it, I was preceded by my own video, this one that you're about to see. And the difference of my experience as somebody who is a public speaker was rather than the previous year where I had to do all the intro myself, and come up with these little banging messages, which you all know, you know, you're always trying to come up with them. Um, this was different. It, this was shot in a way that explains a very big piece of me and my work. And it meant that I went in straight into a conversation rather than the intro of me. The intro of me had already <laughs> happened. And um, so that's one of the best ways of, of using them, but I'm gonna share this one, you'll see. So this is an intro to me. Um, let me make sure I've hit that little, a little button, the secret square. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Let me just see where it is. Move this. Okay. 
so here we go. Can you all see? Yep. Great. Let me ask you a question. If it was the last day of your life and you were hanging up your bag of bones and you'd had a great life and you look back on it, the question is, is there something that you would have regretted not doing? My name is Sally Griffin, aka Millionaire Yogi. And many years ago when I was traveling through India, two things happened. I started to receive a download of information. The first part of the download was happiness is a choice. And then the second part of the download came down and it was this simple, and you'll never be happy working nine to five. I'm a spiritual business coach and a performance coach. I've launched a lot of different kinds of businesses. I've written three books, I've run a yoga festival, I've run over 60 international retreats, and I've taken a real estate company from zero to seven million in London. Now I've come to the part of my life which is the most exciting. And that's because I'm teaching you how to launch your business. I teach barefoot in business. And that means that you can take a business around in your pocket, from your phone, from your laptop, you can be a digital nomad, and have a natural flow of all the cycles in life without being in an office. You can live the life that you want. So the people that I really want to work with are people who I would describe as having a calling. And what is a calling? A calling is something that calls you forward, gets you out of bed in the morning because you simply can't leave it alone. Happiness is the objective and having time with loved ones to yourself, to travel, while making money is part of the calling. If this speaks to you and something is calling you forward, and even if you don't know the first step, then why don't we have a conversation and call me. Okay, so did everybody see that? Yeah, and the sound was great. <laughs> sound was great? Sound was great, yeah. Good job. So hey when... everybody, this is Sally Griffin. Oh no, AKA I'm going Billy again. Nancy. Help! And I ah, help visionaries because... That's what I didn't know how to do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, okay. Renee was going through this with me. Now I don't know how to get back to the other screen. Let me just see. Oh yeah. Where are you? Oh, you know, it's funny with Zoom, uh, for those of you who use this, there's always these little nuances, but it's such a great platform. So bless you. Yeah, and, and I mean, I think, you know, when we're talking about symbols, so you can see immediately as an intro to me versus an intro to me like this. Mm -hmm. It's a very, it gives me uh, credibility. I didn't, um, and I want to talk to you a bit about symbols on that level as well. I can be on one level super woo-woo down, down one end of like the farthest end of that. I didn't want that video to be that, like me, uh, you know, dancing around a fire, chanting or whatever. And I do do all of those things. Mm -hmm. I wanted just a hint of it so that you could, so that that audience, which is my audience who's interested in spirituality, um, could get a little flavor of it. And so the choice was to do something with the incense on the beach and mm -hmm. to have that free flowing Indian connection. I'm talking about India, um, but it was just enough to have that bunch of incense and me saying I'm a performance coach. Mm -hmm. So that some people might just go, all oh, right, she teaches maybe performance, you know? And they got it, but they're not, oh, she's always like in some cave doing some, you know, super weird stuff. The other thing was, I find sometimes the, although I, I am always working with money and I'm really super chilled out about talking about it, I didn't want it to be, uh, here's how you get the money, you know, here's the money. So <laughs> we basically made it very clear in the video that there is abundance. That's part of the credibility. I've, I've built big businesses and I say that but you don't see money. You don't see me jumping into a Ferrari. You don't see me wearing the Gucci. 
you do mm -hmm. see me, there's one angle of just some rings, which happen to have sapphires in them. That was the money piece. Mm -hmm. And you might see a pair of posh shoes that I'm wearing. And that's it, you mm -hmm. know? And mm -hmm. it's, there's a, a subtle way that this works versus, you know, when you see some of the rap uh, videos, the way that they show money is mm -hmm. like, it's chicks like <laughs> gyrating around you know it's all like show me the money it's mm -hmm. ridiculous and in fact it sort of is it's a total turnoff for people who are maybe engaging with money as a spiritual energy right. so you can see how i played some of that and some of it was also when you use zoom shots sorry drone shots mm -hmm. um you can see how it gives a very worldly perspective because i always wanted to be global you know mm -hmm. from the from the outset i was never interested in just being a, a local london girl so some of the symbols you can see there but there's a lot of them playing in uh even the seagull mm -hmm. i don't know if karim is on the uh on the video right now karim is the vid videographer but i was like we were like get that seagull because it represents so much. It's like that I'm talking about, it could be the last day of your life. And we right. didn't want some ghastly symbol for that. We want, you know, hey, we're all gonna pass. But when we look back, do we wanna be happy that we've left a legacy? Right, so, right. You know. I love how you're speaking of this because I, I think back to early on in entrepreneurship, right? Like I, um, I started to, you know, do some online shows and summits and that kind of thing. And I was still finding my, my voice, my, my own messaging. And, um, so it was very natural for me to look at others that I looked up to and want to be like them. Right. And I've heard this now from so many entrepreneurs like, oh yeah, I just kind of copied her look and feel like I'm me, but you know, I, and I was no different. Like <laughs> it, this makes me cringe years back. I did a an online show and I wanted the banner to be like Tony Robbins, you know? And, and so I was telling my, uh, you know, Olga who's on my team, I was like, yeah, when you create the banner, I want it to be like black behind me and it's like light coming out. Like I want it to be like him. And then what I kept hearing people say at, a, at events was like, I just want to make 10 K a month, 10 K a month. So I'm like, okay, I need to have a line about making 10 K a month. So the problem with this was it was not authentically me. Right. It was like Tony Robbins, masculine, I'm powerful energy, which he's great. I really look up to him. And then this title and tagline that was all about making money. And even though my ideal clients want to make money, first and foremost, every single person I attract, first and foremost, just says, Amy, I just want to help more people, right? I just want to make a di bigger difference. I want to make an impact. And so, and that's a true reflection of me, right? We are who we attract. And so when I thought about that, I'm like, oh, got it. I don't need to be like somebody else. I get to be me. And so it completely was this liberating experience. And for those of you who can relate to this, you know, just know that it's never about being like someone else. Even if you look up to them, you can be inspired by them and, and appreciate them for what they've created. And the people who want to work with you want to know who you are, you know, like what's unique about you. And so that way, when you're bringing in these, you know, symbols that Sally's speaking into or your messaging, like, who are you? Who are you? So even um, one of the things that, that helped me was um, something that um, Olga, who I work with, helped me was like, she had all these words and then she had me circle like the five words. And what you could do is write down what are five words that you want to have expressed through your messaging, expressed through your symbols, expressed through your marketing. And, um, and I, every couple of years I read, I'm, I'm definitely due to do that again because my messaging and branding has evolved. Um, but you know, connected is definitely one of the words, you know, and, um, approachable. Like I like to be approachable and like, I, I love luxury, but I, I don't want it to be pretentious, you know? So there's this like, like luxurious yet, you know, um, approachable, connected, generous, loving, like, just think about like, what are the words that you want to have come through in your own message so that there can be that underlying current of what you stand for. Is this making sense? Like, I would just love to, I love creating some engagement here. So for those of you who are in a place where you can type it in, like what's one word that you would like to have come through in your message, in your brand, just go ahead and type in the word in the chat. So I can, you know, Sally and I can feel your energy here too. Even if it, don't overthink it, just what's the first word that comes to you. So that as, as you go on with your day, even beyond this call, you can already start bringing it. Okay. So Sue Ann says possibilities. Oh, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. 
Um, Adrian says love. Brion says responsibility, right? So, so it can be these underlying currents of these words. I know some of you are calling in. So for those of you calling in, like you can think about what is that word? So Larissa says intuitive wisdom. Yeah. So, and, and you can speak in like something Sally and I were talking about the other day was that it, you can have it come through in your symbols. You can also speak about it, you know, like, um, like when we had the example of how, like, to me, one of the things I think about is hugging, right? Like hugs <laughs> are part of what I love. And she said, then you can speak into that. And I said, you know, it's interesting. Sometimes I do, if I am talking to someone, for example, that I know I'm going to meet in person, I'll, I'll bond with them over the phone. I'll say, and just know that when I meet you, if you're open to it, I will hug you because I'm a hugger. And they're like, oh, I'm a hugger too. And it's like this huggers unite happy thing. <laughs> so I'm I love seeing these words because you can bring that through, through symbols, through your message, through the essence of who you are. Um, so yeah, it's just powerful. Um, so Sally, I know you, you also talked about um, a symbol technique. A symbol yes. technique. Yeah. I, mean, I can take people through a, um, what I'd like to do is uh, at some point I'd like to show you a very different kind of ad than mine because mm -hmm. I am out there but for very uh, what's the word straight business people right who don't want to look like you know a hippie wandering down a beach um your symbols would be equally as powerful but played out in a very different way so i think what might be useful is if i go through a technique where you can start to find some symbols um and in this case we're going back to my my alternative persona, which is shut your eyes. I'm gonna guide you on a little um, journey and I want you to just be completely relaxed um, and keep your eyes shut throughout the process. So take a deep breath in through your nose and exhale through your mouth. And another one of those deep breath in through the nose and exhale through your mouth. And another one of those deep breath in through the nose. And exhale through your mouth. And then as you start to breathe, rather than breathing through your lungs, imagine if you were breathing through every cell of your body. So you're drawing in energy, breathing in through every cell of your body. And as you're exhaling, you're exhaling through every cell. And imagine as you inhale, you're bringing in fresh, clear energy for the day. And as you're breathing out, any tiredness, any disappointment, any illness. And as you're breathing in, you're breathing in again into every cell of your body. So move into areas that you don't normally think about. What about the back of the heart? So breathing in fresh energy into the back of the heart. And as you're breathing out, anything that is doubt, disappointment, resentment, as you're breathing in again, breathe into the back of the heart, filling up that space with light. So you're seeing that each cell in your body is starting to shimmer with this beautiful effervescent light. And then, Find yourself in a beautiful place in nature, which is your beautiful place. It can be anywhere. It could be by the sea or a meadow, on a mountain, in a forest, in a desert. It doesn't matter, but feel your way forward into what is really would make you just so happy being wherever you are. And as you're still breathing with this cellular breath, you're starting to breathe in nature in the same way. So drawing that energy into every cell of your body. And as you're breathing out, you're becoming more like one with nature. There are no boundaries. Allow yourself to look down at the earth beneath your feet. And as you see the quality and texture of the earth, also notice that you are naked and you feel amazing. You feel safe, you feel free. And look at the colors in your nature spot. 
start to turn up a dial on the saturation. So it's like you're seeing these colors pop. And allow yourself to look around so you see also what is behind you. And then prick up your ears and see if you can hear the sounds of nature in the distance. What are you actually hearing? And if you are able, you may even pick up a scent on the air and feel the quality of the air on your skin. It's the perfect temperature. So now we're going to go into this place of just seeking out feelings. So as you feel your own energy, I want you to imagine yourself very much like an animal. So that you really are just this, this quality of feelings. How do you feel in this beautiful nature spot? Just like an animal. You're not thinking, you dropped down into your heart now. And I'd like you to just imagine what kind of animal you are. So if you were to immediately connect with that level of your essence, what kind of animal would you be? And from this perspective of being that animal, start to remember when you were really young. Think about when you were about nine years old. And remember what you were described as by, say, teachers or family friends or parents. How did they describe you? Were you a sociable child or were you off on your own? Did you like adventures? Did you like nature? Did you like playing with cars? So you're dropping into this essence of really who you are and who you were when there weren't too many boundaries. And as you had developed at that point, there would be a very strong essence of who you were that you can probably feel now. And if you were to put a word on that, I want you to draw that word forward, allow yourself to experience that word of who you are, a very deep essence of who you are and see what word is showing up for you. And then you could write that in the sand or in the dirt beneath your feet. You can just write that word. And then I'd like you to just move forward in time when you started to care about something, let's say in your business even, or in a project, it doesn't have to be a business, it could have been a project. What was something that was of great importance to you that you wanted to express? And start to get a symbol for that. What is the symbol of who you, re what were you trying to do on this planet? What were you bringing forward as a high frequency energy of really probably wanting to help or make a difference? What was that? And the final perspective we could move to is the one that was, you've just seen in, in the video that I had. I want you to imagine it is your last day on the planet. And it's been a good life. 
this is not a sad moment. You're looking back over your life and you're thinking, did I do what I came here to do? So ask yourself, what did you come here to do? And that bundle of energy may be a sentence. It may be a feeling. It may be as strong as a symbol or a word, but we're gathering information. So look back and experience, really what did you come here to do from this perspective? That maybe if you didn't do, you would feel, hmm, it wasn't a life fully lived. And it's like you've now gathered some information at a very deep level from deep places. So I want you to just draw that information to you. So you've got the animal that you are, you've got the word that you drew into the earth. You have the essence of what you wanted to do in the world, maybe as a project or business. And you've got also looking back on your life, what you really came here to do. And so we're gonna come out of this now and I keep your eyes shut, but just rub your palms together. Rub, 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 rub. So generate heat and then place them over your closed eyes and breathe in and exhale. And again, keep your eyes shut. And then place them over your closed eyes, breathe in and exhale. And one more of those. Blah, 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 blah. Place them over your closed eyes, breathe in and exhale. And then you can rub your hair, your scalp, back of the neck, temples, front of the throat and just come back into the room. So feel yourself coming back out of that. And so it's, it's, it's a rapid experience of the expression of you in, in quite a number of forms. And this is often how I start working with people about their symbols and going to town on their brand. So it may seem disconnected, but it isn't. <laughs> um, so I'd love to open this up with different people if you'd be willing to speak or chat. And um, just let's have somebody just say, like, what were a few of those elements? And I can start to show you how you would piece this together. Hi, Sally. Brion. Hey, Brion. Lovely to um, meet you. I, that was, that was wonderful. Jaguar was my animal. Creativity was my word. Love and truth and freedom were the kind of the, the pre pre prevailing uh, elements of, of my message. Oh, that's great. And just to say, it's interesting because when we do these videos, which are visionary ads, we do no more than five scenes. And you've just come up with five, boom, just like that. That's who you are. So Jaguar, what do you feel about a Jaguar? What are the qualities of that animal? Uh, powerful, steady, uh, focused, mysterious, seductive. So you can already- Spiritual. Think spiritual. spiritual. Yeah. Um, you can already see you as a jaguar. That would be your persona as something that moves through your business. I mean, you don't say, hey, you know, today I'm a jaguar. I have no idea what you do, by the way. Just tell me what you do. What's your business? I'm, I'm an actor, director, entertainment. Oh, great. Okay. So it would be starting to define what you see as jaguar because many other people will see it as something else. But I think we could agree 
definitely mysterious, seductive. There's something, and you'd be in your power when you're operating at that level. And so if you were off key, it would almost be like you're not powerful. You're not, I mean, there's a seductive, sensual thing about big cats that I think we, are, we all go, oh my God, big cats are just like amazing. And they're different than big dogs, actually. They have a kind of, you know, movement with them. So we'd take all those words out from Jaguar and that would be a scene for you. So I could just say, you know, for instance, you would be needing to be flowing through people, uh, connecting slightly, um, not aloof exactly, but you'd be positioned as somebody that people look to, look up to. Um, sensual, great. You know, that would be an outfit. And, mm -hmm. and so you start breaking down all of these. Just remind me of some of the other words that you came up with, and that would be like one of the threads of a scene. And because you work... Oh, Brianna's is very stylish, is he? Oh, great. Like, uh, creativity was the word in the sand. And then uh, yeah. joy, love, and truth were the messages from my right. business. So you can start to imagine if you were to break these down into symbols of branding or your qualities when you're in flow, right? When you're in flow is when you're truly creating influence because mm -hmm. it's the root of the word then you would have to be joyful. There would be something fun about your presentations, the way that you are, whatever fun means to you. Serious would not be on brand, so to speak, for you. You need to show something. Compared fun to Jaguar, it shows a very different side of your nature, right? So joy would have to be shown as a completely different identity or a different scene. And even when you write these down, because I was talking to Amy about, it's not, I'm super visual. And so I, I work with visuals all the time. And I would start to bring those things into play, actually literally in my branding to do with the, uh, the visuals I'm using, even the brand itself, even the symbols of the brand. But you can also do it like Jaguar commentary you know, Brion's Jaguar day of commentary would mean that you would, you would take on that kind of persona and even your written work would come from that perspective. And you can imagine on another day, if you wanted to show the joy, it's completely different than Jaguar. You know what I mean? It's like really, it's two totally different sides of you, but which is super important. And so we would create those into scenes or pieces of work or messaging that you're doing so that as a compact five scene person, you kind of express it all. You know what I mean? Does that feel right to you? Yeah, it does. It certainly does. Yeah. And Jaguar, uh, Black Panther is often a, an archetype that I go to 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 uh, kind of access that power. Some, sometimes I need to use an archetype to ex explore that. So then it would be like meditate on your Jaguar, keep the symbol around you, uh, stay in touch with who that is, what that is, you know? And mm -hmm. uh, there's so many ways to use it, like presentations, for instance. I would use that one if you're speaking publicly, you know? Mm -hmm. It would be a, a super powerful. It's very, like I said, very different than big dogs. Big cats have this kind of, I don't know, I love cats anyway, I have three. So um, it's almost like you start to inhabit your symbols, you become them. And then when you're doing certain key things that are important to you, you have to remind yourself like, who am I? What am I doing today? And Jaguar is very elegant. So don't turn up in a scruffy, uh, you know, like old t-shirt and a pair of horrible <laughs> shorts on Jaguar day, right? <laughs> it wouldn't fit. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's great, Sally. Thank you. Yeah. That's, Pleasure. That's, love that reminder. So I, know, uh, I know we're going to, we can have some more shares. The one thing I, I, I know that Sally, you shared with me is that, um, 
that you, because I know there's, we could go on with everybody today and I, I love this conversation so much. So Sally has been so kind to, to offer another um, class that's happening yeah. on, so if everyone could just write this down in your calendar, um, on March 5th at 8 a.m. Pacific, she's gonna do a, another class that's all about identifying your three key symbols. So if you really wanna take your, your, your message, your brand, your marketing to the next level, um, so she can really help you with that and it's completely free. So Sally, I want to say thank you for your generosity. So it's March 5th at 8 a.m. Pacific. If for some reason you're not able to make it live, then I believe you're, you're gonna be recording it too, right? Yeah, you can send a recording anyway because yeah. it's, uh, it's next Thursday, not this week, following Thursday um, at 8 a.m. in the morning for you guys. But anyone in England, it's um, four o'clock in the afternoon. So, awesome. yeah. Awesome. And then Renee, you ha you, I think you have the link for it, right? So um, I, I believe this link will be sent out to everybody. Um, but if you want to just, you know, just decide that, okay, I really want to know more about this because this... To me, what, what I love about what Sally's talking about, it's like, this is that next level, you know, like this is that cutting edge, next level. Let's be the entrepreneurs that, that lean into that and not do what everyone else is doing and yeah. bring those symbols in. Like even in the way Sally's coaching Brion right now about like embodying that Jaguar and having the symbolism come through and then having these other words of joy, love, truth, you know, it come through and just the essence of who he's being and the symbols. Like imagine if every single person on this call or watching the replay had this in your toolbox to bring into the world, you know? So the next time you're speaking, whether it's online, in person, creating videos, um, just doing cool stuff, you know, just like bring it out there. You'll have the, that essence that can be the underlying current and the visuals that you bring into your business and to your mission. So, so yeah, it's March 5th. Um, if you're interested in, in joining and coming to that, if you could just type in symbol, and, and for those of you who are not good at spelling, <laughs> I was thinking symbol is one of those words, right? S-Y-M-B-O-L. <laughs> Type in symbol, like in the, um, in the chat, and uh, so that we, so that Renee can make sure that you get the link to join that class. And even if you're not sure if you're able to make it, at least then um, Renee, who collaborates with us, will know that you'll want the replay um, because again, this is to me whenever whenever I collaborate with someone like Sally or or take time out of my day. You know, I like to pack my day full. I'm, I'm traveling a lot, hosting events, doing a lot of things. Um, I love it when I give myself permission to dedicate time to myself and my business and the mission I'm bringing out into the world. You know, and, and so carving out that time to either join live ideally or receive the gift of the replay that Sally's so kind to do with all her travels and whatnot. So just type in symbol in the chat, just the word symbol, and that way she'll know and Renee will know that you're wanting to get access to that free training so that you can get the three symbols that you can have in your business. And some of the benefits, like it's really cool when, as I've been learning from Sally, when you bring this type of visualization into your business, it's like it actually increases your conversions. So imagine if you, you had these types of symbols in the videos that you record and that you put out there um, and even if you're just like, oh, Amy, I don't do videos. Like, just no, I used to not do them either. Like, I used to freak out about it, even though I love speaking. But something about being on camera, there was a complete block, like, for the longest time. And at some point, I just had enough influence around me, just like, Amy, just do it. Don't worry about what you look like, the perfect lighting, all these things. Just do it. It's okay if you stumble over your, like, it's okay, right? Like, done is better than perfect, <laughs> okay? So, um, so just imagine having these, these symbols you bring out, and then you can use it in your branding. You can use it on your, on your website, on any new sales webpage or opt-in page. You can have these images at your events or your retreats, or if you're creating PDFs, you, know, you can have this essence of who you are come through. So my point is, I just, I just am so grateful for you, Sally, for doing this for our, our communities. So just type in symbol in the chat and then she'll hook you up. So I just wanted to give you that little shameless plug. <laughs> so um, yeah, so thank you for typing that in. And, um, and Renee, if you can help them out with uh, giving them access, that'd be great. Um, so yeah, so uh, was there anyone else that wanted to share, like if, if we, uh, we have time for another person to share in the visualization, what, what were some of the things that came through for you? And you can unmute yourself and uh, don't be shy. <laughs> anyone? I see Larissa smiling. <laughs> Too. It's interesting that for me it was Puma, which is I think close to Jaguar, the big cat and the black cat. 
And I wanted to ask a question like, do you actually suggest having the animal move through as a visual? Yeah. You, you actually literally can. Um, it depends where you are in your branding, right? So um, if you are an absolute, this is the thing about branding that's so interesting is people think they can never go back like when they've started. And what I'd like to say to all of you is permission to start from scratch again on certain levels. My um, sort of expertise, if you like, is taking people up to the next level. And so I use a lot of this work to get them not an average, like how to just develop a business, but it's like, well, okay, you've got that. Now where are you, where are you gonna go? Like what are we, what's next? And if you have got the symbol, it's great, the big cats are coming through today and we've got a tiger as well. It's just so interesting. Um, you can literally start to bring in branding around that with a certain say project that you're doing or a certain, um, you know, I don't know if you understand, like as entrepreneurs, you're not ever going to just do one thing. It's highly unlikely. Lots of people think, oh, dream is done, the end. That's not the way it works. The minute that you're on the roll of starting to develop, oh, hello, little one. Hello, cutie pie. Um, the more that you create and allow yourself to be more and more creative, you will get more ideas that just keep coming to you and they all need identity. You don't want them to necessarily be how you were 10 years ago, you know? And so these are accessing the next level for you, really. And so you can literally use them, you know? Some of my clients create brands out of the images that they get and they create the messages and even the names of the, of the words that they're, they're getting. You know, they create their super niche that way. So you can. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Do you want to tell us any of your other words? Yeah, uh, essence was the word that essence. I wrote in essence. 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 I love the word essence. It's great. And manifest. What the purpose why I'm here is to like teach people they can have anything they want. Nice. And for me, my purpose is prosperity and abundance and manifestation. Nice. So again, because I often work in uh, seeing these as video scenes, can you see how different those are? Those different, ah, oh, I just saw Ashwarya, who is uh, the art director of, of Hi, our videos. Amy. Hey. Hi, Amy. Nice to see you again. Thank you, nice. thanks for coming. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I've just come from a fashion shoot, so I'm so happy that I caught this Zoom call. And um, we have a really great premiere as well, ready for you. Has, has Renee got that? Yes, she okay. has. Ah, well, let we, lest, lest we digress, but I do want to digress for a minute and um, big up the team that I work with. So Ashwari is the art director and director on the videos. Uh, Karim, is he around at all? So I can say big love to him and his videography. Karim is not here, but he sends his love. Okay. <laughs> Renee, big love to you too, darling, because Renee is our assistant in the States. So what we've done is there was a premiere that we wanted to um, show you an entirely different kind of ad, which has come from somebody who's a financial services person. Um, and some of you know her, Michelle Pace. Oh, sorry, Michelle Pace, Michelle Boss. Yes. So Renee is going to share this one because it's been sent to her as a link. And I haven't even seen this. I was there at the shoot, but I was not there awesome. in the edit. Yeah. Super and it'll give you a very different way of, of somebody who's working not as woo-woo as me. Um, so let's see if Renee can do that. Imagine being a newly divorced mom with full custody of two young kids and the one paying alimony. I would lie awake at night, terrified about how I was going to keep a roof over our heads. 
getting through those times would later become the basis of my life's work as a financial coach. Hi, I'm Michelle Boss. I'm a wife and mother. I'm a healer. I'm a holistic and visionary financial coach and educator. I'm a serial entrepreneur. I am a manifester of dreams. When I left corporate, my now husband pointed out a parcel of raw land to me. Curious, what started off as me asking questions turned into a calling, a dream to be in service, a vision to help all boats rise with the tide, a passion to create and nurture a place for others to gather and rejuvenate. I've run a $30 million retail store with 200 team members. I was a top sales rep in corporate for 12 years in a row. I've built a private coaching practice from scratch that's now full, and I'm building a 30 room inn with a $12.5 million budget in the California wine country when it was a home for my family. I knew when I saw this opportunity with the land, with the same intuition and instinctual savvy of a mother, that creating this dream was possible too. From gathering mentors and investors, this opportunity to transform native land has been waiting for me for over 20 years. Hey dreamers, I'm telling you that it's possible that your dreams can become a reality. And with my skill set, you can manifest them. I'm not your typical financial professional. I operate from an abundant mindset. Believe that you are your only limit and I can turn your dreams into reality. Do you have a dream that's still calling? Let's talk. <laughs> Great. Wow, I just got the chills. <laughs> That's amazing. Because we know her as well, right? Yeah, and yeah, I love Michelle. She's great. Yeah. And the thing about fi financial services, my God, how many thousands of financial services people are there? You know? Yeah. And to, to get through that noise, um, what a different image she has. You know, you really see what she what's important to her. And it's very human, very mother. Um, outdoors, yoga, and all of that. So yeah, so it's another example of somebody putting together their symbols and their character. Mm -hmm. um, wow, I'm so pleased. Yeah. Yeah, nice work. <laughs> Thank you for that. Awesome. Well, um, I saw that a lot of you typed in symbols, so I know that you'll be uh, joining Sally on this really special gift of a, a call to help you to identify your three key symbols. Um, so if any of you missed that, just go ahead and type in symbol in the chat right now. So before we wrap up, Renee can uh, provide the link for you, totally free. And Sally, uh, before we wrap for today, is there anything else that you want to share with our, our beautiful attendees or those watching the replay? Um, no, I want you to just think big and bigger than your Zoom screen, <laughs> bigger than just a flatline message and start to weave something much deeper. And I mean, yeah, join us next week because I think you'll get something invaluable from this level of working, especially mm -hmm. if you're about to up level, no matter where you are. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just, just be authentically you and really, really connect to what are the symbols of that and then use them. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, thank you again, Sally, for uh, this fun collaboration. And thanks to all of you for joining us. It just, it just tells us that you have a, a deeper vision and, and dream and mission in your heart that gets to be out there in the world, that you get to be fully expressed. And I'm excited for you to explore your symbols, your message. Think about what do I want to become known for? And on, on a deeper level, as Sally said, what did I come here to do? You know, who did I come here to be? So that no matter when each of our last days are, we have it's many, many, many days away from now, uh, but we can look back on a life fully lived, that you left a legacy, that your, your time here mattered, as I know that it does. And, um, and just know that 
that we all get to be shoulder to shoulder as the entrepreneurs who really bring this love and light into the world. So thank you for being here. I've, I've so joined, enjoyed being here with you as well. And um, Sally, thank you again from the bottom of my heart. So appreciate you. Pleasure. Thank you so much. It was great. Oh, really Have nice a great you day. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Mwah. Bye. Have a great day. Bye. Ah. Renee, you're still there, right? Yes. Still here. Excellent. Candace says, thank you. Oh, that's to me. <laughs> and Enrique, I think he, he sent this. Hi, Enrique, I see you're still on here. Uh, he said, thanks for inspiring us. I'm one with the symbol love. Oh, so. <laughs> that's beautiful. Yeah, I mean, I can see there's still some people. Have a great day, guys. But um, that was wonderful. Yeah. And there's certainly quite a few people I've never met, which is really nice to see. Meet new people. Lots of people hiding because it's probably the morning. <laughs> no, actually it's not. It's 10 o'clock. It's 11 now, yeah. 11, yeah. So they're not all hiding in their dressing gowns. No. Um, well, I'm going to end the recording. Do you want to stay there just for a sec? And I'll say my goodbye. But I'll end the recording. There we go.